Okay, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at unwrapping a character using 3D Coat. So the reason we use this kind of external package, which is this package here, the 3D Coat, is because um, it has a lot of functionality and tools in it that make it very fast for unwrapping a organic character. You know, whether it's a human or a monster or whatever, you get um, the tools in 3D Coat much faster than the kind of default Maya ones. Um, but to actually get this character into 3D Coat, we need to export it from Maya. Uh, this is easy enough to do. If you just first of all open Base Mesh, you can download that off Moodle, select the character, and then go to File, Export Selection. You can hit your little options tab here if you want. And you want to pick the OBJ export from the file type list. Now there aren't any major settings in the options, not like you get with FBX. This will just export the model and nothing else. So if we do export selection, get our name box, and I'm just going to call this test unwrap. Well, I've got test unwrap 2, but you can call it test unwrap. That's what I've got there from earlier. Okay, so that'll be very quick to actually export. Um, if you're, when you go to export, if OBJ isn't showing up, which it might do at home, you do actually have to turn that on. <coughs> and to do that, you go to Window, Settings, Preferences. And if I just go to Preferences here. And in this, you can, that would be the right one actually. We go to Plugin Manager here. If you scroll down the list, you'll see you've got OBJ export, and just make sure both of those are ticked on. You'll, if this is the first time you're doing it, then you'll also want to tick on FBX, because that's something you'll be using a lot in the course. And if you just go to Refresh and Close, that will then appear, and you can go to Export Selection and pick OBJ. And once you've ticked it on there, that will always now appear in your export menu. You don't need to do that every time or anything. Okay, so if you load up 3D Coat, and I'm just going to turn this off, go to that. Then if we go to File, Import, now pick a model for per pixel painting. and I'll select my OBJ and just hit open. I'm getting this error here uh, and that's because I didn't apply auto mapping to that model which means it's got UVs kind of all over the place at the moment and 3D code will get a bit confused initially. Uh, this doesn't affect us in the program at all to be honest it just means that we'll have to wait longer for it to import because it's trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, so once your model's imported into 3D Coat, uh, you, you should see the model in your viewport like so. Now, as with any kind of 3D app, the 3D viewport controls are slightly different. Uh, in this one, if you hold Alt and left mouse button, you can rotate around. You can actually hold Alt to rotate and then press Shift to lock onto orthographic views just as you can with, with ZBrush. So it's Alt and left mouse button to rotate and shift if you want to lock to a view. You can hold Alt and middle mouse button to pan around and I just have to try and remember how to zoom in and out now. And you can zoom in and out by holding the rollable and right mouse button. Or sorry, Alt and right mouse button as well. So you've basically got all your controls of Alt. So if you hold Alt and left mouse button, you'll rotate. Hold Alt and middle mouse ball, you will pan. If you hold Alt and right mouse button, you can zoom in and out. Okay, so you'll notice we've got one bar of tools down the left. We've got a set of options up here and tool set over here. Now you notice here we've got paint, tweak, retopo, re UV, voxels and render. 
Now these are all the different things that you can do in 3D Coat. Obviously the main one we're going to focus on is actually UV, so creating our UV. So just select this tab to start with. You can actually also sculpt in 3D Coat and you can paint textures in 3D Coat. So it has a lot of, a lot of tools in it actually. So in the UV tab you notice you've got UV Preview and we've got a whole bunch of options here down the bottom left. Now UV, UV Preview actually just shows us what our UVs are going to look like because we do most of our editing in the viewport. Uh, just to show you the viewport controls over here we have a light we can actually dim and we have a way of moving the light source around as well. So I tend to like I like to have mine you know quite evenly lit. You want to make sure that you can see all these green lines. Uh, you also have a choice of texture up here so you can have simple checker, no checker or complex checker. Now I just tend to start with no checker for defining the seams because it's just a bit easier to kind of see what's going on in this view. Okay, so let's begin unwrapping this model. Now, you can see here there's a lot of kind of green lines and I'm also getting this yellow line tool here. Now the green lines are basically where 3D Coat is guessed where it seems should be. So that's how it's trying to split the model up at the moment. But I tend to find they're never actually that good. So if you just hit this clear seams tab, you can start from scratch. Now you notice how the character is completely green at the moment. Now the reason for that is because it will split into different colours uh, the different UV islands that you come up with. So straight away let's go to the edge loop tool and I just want you to select roll over this loop here. Now if you press the left mouse button you'll see that actually cuts through the model and now we have two UV islands. You can see in the UV preview actually it's given me a guess as to what those two will look like when they're unwrapped. Obviously just because it's two complex blocks at the moment it's having real trouble. So the next lines I want you to define are the lower, are the anchor one here, like so. And then I want you to put a cut, actually we'll go say up the leg here. So we can see that seam is now there. Then I want you to put one on both sides of the leg. By the way, you can see something I forgot to mention. I've got this red translucent box here. And that's because I have symmetry turned on. So as long as your model is made correctly and you have your pivot point in the right place, you can use symmetry. So if I turn off symmetry, you'll see now I can say mark that leg and it won't mark the other one. But I go across the x-axis and you can see it's creating it on both sides of the model. Obviously if I did Y or Z, you can see there that that's the wrong symmetry value, so it wouldn't work correctly. Okay, so now we can see I've got one island here and I've got one island here. And you can see both of them are already starting to look more representative of what they of the actual model in our UV preview. Okay, so I'm happy enough with the legs for now. So let's have a look at doing the torso. Now we're going to need a line down here. I'll just click that into place. And you can actually see where that's gone to. It's only just gone down to the arm here. So let's just undo that. And I'll try putting a seam, say, here to break the arm off. Now we can see that what it's done is, it's actually guessed that I want to seam all the way down this arm. Now that may not be the case. And if, if it's getting your seams wrong, you can use the Mark Seams tool here 
to actually just click and add in seams by hand using the left mouse button. Let's get that last one. So we can see that's now split the arm off from the torso. If you hold control and click, you can actually remove seams. So left click to add and control and left click to remove. Okay, so another useful tool is UV path. So if I just select UV path, let's say I wanted to do this neck here. You can see it says pick point one. So I pick the first point and then pick the second point. And then I can even carry on going round my model. And then if you hit enter, that will draw in your scene. So you can see it's actually saying pick point two now. And if I press escape, that will take me out of the tool and I can start again. So here, so down to here. Hit enter. Now you can see, because if I hadn't, hadn't hit escape, got point two is still here. So if I say I wanted to start on the arm, it's going to guess that gap follows on from that point. That's why you need to use escape to start again. Then that tool could be really useful. Okay, back to the edge loop tool. If I select the wrist to break the hand off, zoom in, and then select this arm loop I was trying to do earlier, you can see now that that is drawing the seam up until where I've already drawn seams. So if you're finding the seams too long, actually doing the two break points and then drawing in between can be another fast way of doing seams. Okay, so rolling over each of my components, I can see that the arm, that's looking good. This isn't looking too good. And the legs are looking reasonable. Um, at this stage, we could have a look at trying to fix those problems. Like here, normally the way you'd fix them is by unwrapping and then using the other tools or by adding in more cuts. I think for now actually, let's go around and finish this mesh off first and then have a look at refinement. So we're going to move on to the head now. So normally when you're wrapping a head, you'll want a line at the back here. So if I just click, you'll see that's not, that's drawn a line far too long. So we use UV path and click and click and hit enter and then escape and we'll click there to there and escape and then we'll go down here say up to there so this this is a common way of unwrapping a head defining a line where it cuts off at the chin and defining a seam on the back of the head now the reason you, you'll often use this kind of technique is because this is the area that's kind of least visible in most in most characters, as is the back of the head, because you'll often have hair, a hat, whatever, something covering it up. Okay, so again we're going to go to edge loops, and I'm just going to define the eyes and the inner mouth. And we can get a good idea of our unwrap from our UV preview here. Still looking a bit stretched. We go back to UV path. Oops. Press escape. I'm just going to go around the edge of the ear. It's also always, pretty much always a good idea to cut the ear off from the island of the head. That's because it's quite a complex shape that needs to be folded out, so it's going to distort the rest of the head if you leave it in. Probably go to edge loops, and let's see if we've got a loop here we can use. We do. 
We'll need to make sure we've got a loop in the top as well. So that'll do for now. We'll come back to that later on. Okay, so another important thing about defining your seams is you've got to bear in mind that wherever your seams are, that's where the most difficult parts to texture are going to be because you have to try and match your 2D texture to the 3D model. So for instance on a seam like an ankle here, I wouldn't put a seam on the front bit here. I'd put it on the in, inner part of the foot because that's less likely to be seen than the outer part. Just define the base of the foot here, and then we'll do the inner foot as well. We can see from our preview that isn't looking too bad. Okay, so we're nearly there with our initial kind of unwrap phase. So, last thing to do is the hands, which will probably be the hardest part. So there are several ways to do hands. You could break each finger off individually, or you could do this top bit of the hand as one piece, and then split off the end of the side. And I think I'm gonna probably follow that technique. So we'll start off by defining the top of the thumb, and then just going around fingers like so. Remember you can use UV path. Remember to escape if you've already got the point in place. So. There you go, so I've got the top of my hand there. That's escape. Let's go back to mark seams. We can see the top of the hand, that's not looking too bad. Obviously how you unwrap the hand really depends on you know, what kind of detail you actually want on the hand. So is it going to be a bare hand, is it going to have a glove on, uh, you know, like fingerless gloves or whatever. So you'll have to follow the technique that most suits what it is you're trying to create. Okay, if we check this bit. We can see that's not unwrapped brilliantly. So we'll have to look at a different way of, uh, for doing the hand, for doing the base of the hand. Now let's go and quick think about this. So I could cut these fingers off from the rest of the model. We'll check this. That's okay. That would probably work okay. We could try just cutting the thumb a little bit here. Then with these fingers what we want to do is actually get in that centre line in here. So it's actually quite difficult to get to it. Got that first one there. Now if you are having problems uh, with doing this, you can actually come over here to your different modes and go to faces, and you can actually select faces in this UV window. But you'll need to hit unwrap first to actually split everything off. So we'll hit the unwrap button. And we can see our unwrap window here. So now if you go to islands mode, you can select each island and you can see which what each piece is in your viewport here. So obviously you can see we're having a few issues with the head here for some reason. And I think that's because the ears are still part 
solve this, it's because I didn't get that one under there. Okay, so now we can see because it's a different colour, it's definitely split off. So we'll try hitting unwrap again. Oh, by the way, to, uh, to control stuff in this UV window, you can hold Alt and right mouse button to zoom in and out, middle mouse button to pan, and they're the two you kind of need. Uh, if you hold Shift, that will turn off this controller. You can use this controller to rotate by using the outer handles. You can scale from the inner one and if you want to move it around, you select the circle. Okay, so the head's already looking better there. So if we have a look at this space, you'll notice that each island is a kind of mixture of grey, red and blue. Now, what this is defining, an area that's red um, has more texture space than it does polygon space on the model. An area that's blue has less texture space. Now once we've got our islands here, you can actually say select the islands and if you look in the selected tab, you'll see we've got all these different options. So let's just try relax. And you notice how it's tweaked our unwrap to be a bit more even. Uh, now you also, the other kind of mathematical algorithms you have are ABF and LSM, so let's try ABF. It's not really made much difference there. Try LSCM, and you can see it's done something different. So try ABF, it's back to that, try relax, even, even it out a bit. So you can select a whole bunch of these and try hitting relax on those. Then you can try it on the head as well. So you can try each of your different modes to see which one you'll prefer. And it's normally a matter of kind of picking the one that's going to actually make it easiest for you to paint while still giving you a minimal amount of distortion. Another thing you might do is say look at this area which is obviously the vest and you might think actually I need to chuck in a couple more seams and you might think the same about the legs. I might I'm going to click to add in these. And then if I hit unwrap Uh, you can see now I've got more seams, but I'm making better use of my texture space. And there's less of the harsh uh, red and blue, so there's less distortion in the texture than there were before. So it's a kind of trade off. This will be more difficult to paint because there's more seams, but I've got less texture distortion and I'm making better use of the space. So it's always like a constant, you know a constant kind of battle between the two and you have to kind of find the best you know the best point in between uh, okay so let's have a look at some of these other tools let's for instance say that if we've got an arm here and an arm here now unless you need it specifically for the games engine you could overlap these UVs now most of the time you won't do that because you want to have something different painted on each arm. You might be using this as a light map in which case you wouldn't want these to overlap. But um, if you are able to do that you can select the one identical piece and hit copy UV. You can select the other piece and hit paste UV like so. You can do the same with the legs maybe. So we'll copy UV select that one and hit paste UV copy UV and paste UV there 
You can even do it with these hands. Based. And we'll do it with the feet. Okay, so that'll do for now. You can see, you can even select both these islands and then actually relax them both at the same time. Although, as you can see, don't do that because actually I've just shown it doesn't work very well. I'm going to move this out. We'll hit copy V and then repaste that. Okay, so once you've actually copy uh, overlaid everything, you can then use pack QV and pack QV2. So we'll try pack QV first. Leave the second as default. And you'll see it's re laid out the UVs, but it's left all the bits that we overlaid. So if I try and move this out, you'll see the other piece is still underneath it. Uh, you can also do pack UV2, which just uses a slightly different algorithm. Like so. Now I'm just going to undo that because I, I don't want my overly my <laughs> UVs to overlap, so I'm going to hopefully before I run out of there we go. So I don't want my UVs to overlap, so I'm going to leave them like that. Uh, now the only other thing we need to do is select those troublesome edges in the hand.